My hair is very orange. It's for Halloween. It's intentional. Hello, hello, it's Echo. I've been working on a different video for like a month and I just cannot get into it, so I need to do something else. So we're gonna have a look at some art supplies that I bought quite a while ago that I have been meaning to review, but haven't yet. Fall is here, it's getting very cold. I'm going to a pumpkin patch tomorrow. I'm also getting ready to leave Washington and go, go south. south. This is the first time I've ever done this, so I don't know how well it's gonna go. Please Venmo your thoughts and prayers. First of all, Ikea is a magical, wonderful place, and I love so much about their design philosophies. For anyone who has never been to an Ikea, there's like two levels, at least the one in Arizona has two levels. You go through the upper level first, and that's where they have all the staged furniture. That's the crazy maze area where you walk through through and see how everything would look in your living space. That's usually where they'll have like the kids bunk beds and uh, the like colorful little plates that everyone has at least at some point in their life. I know I've had them. Somewhere in there there's a restaurant and then when you go downstairs that's where they have all the little things. So like your glasses, your kitchenware, uh, towels, pillowcases and blankets and stuff as well as the warehouse where you pick up all of the nice furniture that you were just looking at in little tiny boxes and then you take it home and assemble it very poorly yourself. But they also have a bunch of little kid art supplies. For example, this cute little watercolor set with a nice little Tupperware storage bin on the bottom. And I think there's paint brushes inside. I think I'm just gonna open everything now. That way I can store it all in here. I'm wearing press on nails so they keep popping off, so I'm trying to be very careful. I also really like that IKEA puts like every language you could possibly think of on their packaging. Choking hazards, nice. Okay, so there's like a little plastic sheet on top of it to keep everything nice and pristine. And then you just click these down and this comes off. Yeah. Oh, nice. It comes with these two little cups. Classic Ikea paintbrushes. There's actually like areas in the tray to hold your little cups. That's nice. I just popped off one of my nails in my hair somewhere. So one of my favorite things to get from Ikea whenever I go there are these. They just make really nice, simple brushes. So if you're doing little crafts and stuff, these are really nice. But we're gonna go ahead and empty out these brushes into this little bin. And it just pops off nice and clean. Way to go, Ikea. So the normal pack comes with three pointed brushes and three flat brushes. If I'm remembering correctly, this pack is only a couple dollars and they're just some pretty solid, like, craft brushes or glue brushes. They're good and cheap and decent quality, which I like. On to the next things that will fit in this container. Ooh. So these are a bunch of colored pencils, but based on this tiny little picture, I think these are actually watercolor pencils, which is really cool. So it looks like this comes with 10 colors and a pencil sharpener. I don't remember what the prices for any of these are, honestly. You can tell these are made for children. They're very big. That is a thick pencil. Next, we have a pack of really neon gel pens. It looks like this comes with eight colors, two metallic, and the rest are neon. Next, we have a pack of 12 standard markers. If I had to guess, they're probably water-based. I highly doubt they're gonna be alcohol-based markers because these are intended for children. Washable felt tips, so these are probably water. Oh, the felt tip pen does not dry out if left uncapped for three days. I feel like these are gonna be reasonable quality markers, even though the colors are gonna be a bit limited. Maybe I can make a big multimedia project. So I've run out of room in my little watercolor box, but I only have two more things to show you and then we can get into the art part and test out these bad boys. So as far as unlined paper from Ikea goes, there's really only two options. They have these big rolls of butcher paper that are for kids so that they can draw. The other option that you have are these. These are tiny little uh, essentially sketchbooks. This is a small two pack of completely blank paper. And as far as I can see, it's got 100 pages in each book. They are 13 by 8 centimeters or 5 by 3 inches. Oh, they even have a little piece of paper separating them so they don't get dents on each other. That way these little rivets don't put dents on the other book. Very smart. So we have this very interesting yellow and green one and this very simple orange and white one. Lines on the front so you can write something as well as the paper itself. It feels relatively thin, it's a little off-white, so this really just feels like a simple notebook that you would take notes, like grocery list stuff. It really doesn't feel like paper that's meant for drawing, it feels very like inexpensive, just little note paper. But really any paper can be drawing paper if you try hard enough. I like these little books, they're very cute. We can look at our clues here. Give me your clues, Steve. This is a very purse-friendly sketchbook. So now we're gonna go and play around with all these fancy art supplies and see how they are quality-wise. To the overhead. Okay, so the very first thing that you wanna do when you're working with new art supplies is create a swatch sheet. 
so that you can test out all of your colors and see what they look like. This also helps so that you can check and see if any of your markers are dead. From what I can see, all of these markers are still perfectly fine. They're pretty standard in terms of water-based felt tip markers. As for the paper, the markers did bleed through almost immediately, so don't expect to use any heavy medium with this paper. So because it's October and I am all about that Halloween, I decided to go ahead and test all of these art supplies by drawing pumpkins. Because most of these have multiple shades of green, yellows, oranges, and browns, which means that I can use lots of colors. I think it came out really nice. I like these markers, maybe for like small projects. I've been thinking about making a really basic how to draw for kids channel, so I could see using these markers for that. Next, we're gonna try out the gel pens. Unfortunately, most of these gel pens did not work. If I had to guess, it's partly because of how old they are, but also when I got a closer look, I noticed that all of the gel pens that weren't working were a lot lower on ink versus the green, purple, and gold were still almost completely full. I don't know if the ink just kind of dried up in the tube over time or something, but if I had to guess, this is why they're not working. Next, we're gonna move on to the watercolor. I am going to be using some watercolor paper that I already have because clearly those notebooks are not going to work with watercolor. So the very first thing that I did with this was to just put a drop of water on all of the colors to help rehydrate them and so that I could make a pretty big swatch page. I do really like that this watercolor set comes with white. It's an incredibly valuable color that a lot of sets don't include. I think all these colors are pretty good. I would say that the quality of these are just a little bit above like standard little kid watercolor supplies, but of course they are not as good as professional grade watercolor. They're a little bit more vivid than the kind of American watercolor that I would normally find, but they're still a little bit grainy and not quite as smooth as like a high quality professional watercolor set. For this pumpkin, I decided to start with the gold. You usually wanna start with your lightest colors first and then work your way into your darker colors. For this one, I used gold, a little bit of orange, brown, and my two greens. I probably should have used a little bit more orange, but overall, I think that these worked out pretty well. Moving on, now we're gonna work with our fancy watercolor pencils. And the very first thing that I need to do is test them to make sure that they are actually watercolor pencils and not just colored pencils. Pencils. And sure enough, they are watercolor pencils. So for this one, I decided what would make the most sense would be to lay down all of the color dry and then add water. I feel like watercolor pencils are kind of hard to find in America, so having these is actually really nice. I do not mind how chunky they are at all. I think out of these, the supply that I'm most excited about are the watercolor pencils and the storage bin. I like the little cups, they were very nice. I've been fighting with my hair for like 20 minutes and it's just not gonna work. It is currently 1 a.m. in this corner of the internet and I need to sign off this video so I can go to bed. I wanna give a big ol' thank you to my patrons. You guys keep me alive. Thank you for that. I got a bunch of really cool resin stuff in the mail, so I'm gonna be playing with that soon. Casting some of my art in resin. My hair feels awful right now. That is all I have for you for now, so you get 75 awesome points for making it all the way to the end of this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you later. Goodbye! I have a box full of birds right here, so if they make lots of noises, that's where it's coming from.